Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. You hear that? We're filling them. Went out last night, combined about 10 loads of corn. Just make sure everything's ready for Monday. It's Sunday right now. Today, I don't know. If, hopefully, we will get out and do some harvest. But we got to fill the dryers, vacuum the dryers, get them working, make sure they work, and get everything under control down here before we start dumping 60 loads a day here. The confusion. Do I remember how to do this is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I want the fill light come on. How's it gonna know when it needs corn if the light don't light up? I don't know, you have an answer for him? I don't. <laughs> Does this one work? Uh, yeah, that one lit up and it's full now so the light went off. As you see here, wet grain load light when the dryer needs corn that lights up this dryer here is only half full and it has never lit up but it's filling because it's empty and this spout is not full so i can't explain it if you don't understand it but <laughs> why won't it call i've tried it and run i've Get tried your it little leg on start yes and this i believe has been disconnected right because yeah, we turn it on with the computer, which would identify the reason maybe why that, I wouldn't touch that. <laughs> I don't know why that's like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is supposed to be on there. Maybe. Look out! Don't. <laughs> All right, I climbed up here. I went in that hole right there. The fill switch is literally right there pushed on it, it's working, it's clicking, but we think the light's burnt out. It's, it's minor as a light, we're hoping. That's the field we combined, it was 70 acres. We went out there last night and wiped that out, basically in the dark. We set them, did a couple of rounds, it was dark. So, not very good for videoing, so I didn't video our first setup, but uh, everything worked, worked out actually good, and no troubles, everything got set easily. So we'll show you guys, obviously, corn harvest when we get picking. Not much was done yesterday. All right, I gotta go to the wet van, which we have new catwalking up here that has been redone. So before this catwalk here used to come off the wet van or the overhead to the wet van. Well, the wet van's taller now and it was all ripped down. So now we've got this new walkway right here. over to the wet bed. So we put a bigger wet bed up. It's two rings taller than it used to be, plus it's rounder. It used to be the same height as this bed. Well, you know, that might be an issue. That's for our, to tell us when it's full switch. That seems to not be put in. We're gonna need a plug. Gonna need a plug. Okay. First time being up on this one. So dad wanted to know if it's recirculating, if he's feeding it too heavy, which he is. Pipe ain't big enough. So the, we, we like the grain handler dryer. It's just when you fill it, it's very messy and a lot of the corn comes in there. You're gonna start the motor we going to leave the doors open. There's a tarp in there. You're going to start the fans up and you're going to blow it out the doors? Yes. Well, let her buck. We'll stand here behind the safety of glass. There we go. Here 
Here it comes. The tarp is lifting. That's never done that before. I don't it's think coming that. out. <laughs> this is not working like it used to. <laughs> Shut it down. I don't. I think we normally pull that tarp out and then do that. Oh, we're gonna get hate on that one. <laughs> So that's the tarp that covers the burner, the thing that the LP comes out, blows, makes the heat for the drying of the corn. I think we were supposed to take that out before we started the fan. It's hard to remember from year to year. A lot of days and a lot of projects in between. I said to start it up. Do you think I know what I'm doing in here? I don't. Run? Start? Run. I hear squealing, that's a good sign. Is that the right dryer? He's taking shelter. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's coming out now. So we've got it cleaned out, vacuumed out, blown out. I'll trade you. Oh, I suppose. Whew. <laughs> now we're just cleaning up the mess that comes out as you're filling them through those triangles. They're open to the grain. You can actually reach in there and grab the grain. So it bounces out. Just glad we have cement here because it would be a big mess. Well, it is a big mess. And just like that, it's clean. Like Dad said, do we have to combine corn? It's so clean down here. Give me three days, everything will be red chaff down here. You know what you're doing? Oh. I should leave so that you can yeah, concentrate. These, these people don't blow up. I gotta think. <laughs> Okay, are we going to not yet? Oh, before we fire up, let's talk about this cool system. So this is what we have just installed for the East Dryer. We're doing a test. Um, our Ben crew suggested it to us, or our Ben sales. Ben dealer, there we go. There's the word I'm looking for. Our Ben dealer told us about this, so we're, we're trying one out. We put it on one dryer. This automates... The dryer so it's got a sensor I'll actually show you it's got a sensor on the top of this dryer here right there that's reading the moisture coming into the dryer and then now don't make fun of our mill work millwright work but me and Brody installed this into what dumps the dryer so this is taking constant reading of what it's dumping at. Now, the fancy computer box uh, will control the dryer's heat and speed of dumping once you calibrate all this. It is gonna take a little bit, first time, especially here, to get it all calibrated. You run it in manual till it knows, till you calibrate the moisture sensors and get all of that dialed in. Once that happens, you have an app on your phone or a website actually that you log into and you can change it from the combine you can change it from anywhere so we're super excited about that hopefully that will alleviate some of dad's stress especially at night time it will dry and change the settings throughout the night so you punch in you want it to be dumping at 14.5 or 15 and in theory it should work i did talk to the company they they are very confident in it our ben dealer why are you running Siren! Yeah, shut it off. Our Ben uh, dealer has got like eight of these around the area and said they work really good. So I have a feeling next year we'll be putting it on this dryer, but it is an expense. So we want to try it before we jump both feet in. But if you guys are interested in that, you can go check it out on dryermaster.com. There's lots of cool information there so basically here it will tell us all of our different settings and everything so we're gonna see how this works throughout the season I have a feeling you're gonna wish it's on both of them when it's three in the morning yeah one's, I know it, one's dumping you gotta test it make sure it's worth buying but uh, I've, I'm sure it will be <laughs> as everything that's <laughs> nice is um, how come I got an alarm here see when I looked in here Underneath my uh, alarms, 
Yeah. Then 22 was alarmed, and then that thing started buzzing and screaming. <laughs> That's because it was powering up. So this is under control. That has nothing to do with that. So, so now I'm thinking... You plug something. The West dryer is not full yet. And we vacuumed it out. It's got to be close to full. It's not full. Why won't that light work? <laughs> We're back to the light issue. All right, I'm gonna go get my combine. Oh, I should bring some down here. Yeah, we need stock up down here. Hydration. And get that ready to go get you some corn because you have roughly 3,000 bushels in the wet bin after filling them up that you have I'll to dry. I'll be shutting this one dryer off because that's broke already. Gas valve problem. Don't you shut that off. But it Running. is lowering temperature, you need to turn it up some. I'll wait for the sparrow to sit on that arm and wide open gas The gas valve, valve automation is not working. Like they're both, that is not a part of the new system that it adjusts the temperature. That's not working. Don't think it was working when we finished the season and then we forgot to fix it. So that's on us. Although we did have it inspected, they missed it. Yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna make a phone call. All right, I'm going combine. Okay, call when you need a truck. We need a truck now. Go for we need a truck now. Get the truck! Oh my gosh, that is a beautiful smell. You've never smelled drying corn. You're missing it all. Missing out. Maybe I could bottle it in jars. Oh, oh. first one of the year. Bees wing in the eye. So we brought out the big. The big girl here, the 2596, is ready to rock. Uh, everything seems to be working. Here's a, here's a fun tip. So we had this drive line sitting here, and I, we went to hook it up, and me and Brody pulled for all we had on that to get it to slide. This is supposed to slide. Could not get it to slide. I thought, oh boy, we. Uh, bent it somehow with it riding around on the hitch. Freaked out a little bit. Well, then we ended up hooking little bobcat on to that end, trying to pull it apart, which we couldn't do. We didn't want to bend this, so then we took it totally off. And then we hooked a chain in here, a chain in there to the draw bar, and jerk, jerk, jerk. Finally, it let loose and popped apart. Uh, make sure to grease these. It was rusted together from all of our fire hosing and mud and misery we were in last year. Definitely need to grease that more than not very little amount. So if you can't get it apart, don't panic. Just take it off and grease it. These dumb safety chains never stay hooked, ever. All right, so this is Eric's machine. This is what he'll be running. Same setup as last year, the 600 quad. Uh, he did about one load and said, oh, why didn't we use this all season? Because that thing is just so gutless and pathetic, actually, is what it is. But that is uh, been on the scraper. Dad's been land scrapering, so that's why we used this setup here. And the 2596, that's just all around sweet. And Brian's coming to be the second operator. He's coming. The Brett Favre of grain carving was one. He's more coming year. back. That's awesome. So he's coming to run the second cart. Are we ready, boys? Can you imagine though? We... Oh, you ready, boys? Hi. We're watching the bike. We're watching oh, the bike. That's why the. So we're ready. Productivity has gone downhill when that stuff comes on. Those sports. The, the dog on sports. Those sports again. Go sports. Cutting into our. Efficiency on Sunday. They're winning though. Sunday. It's a plus. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go rip some stocks. Northwest. I got my combine. Turn on the <laughs> iPad. <laughs> Gotta restock my fridge. So we did get uh, both heads out, rocking and rolling last night. We did about 32 acres a piece, 35 acres a piece. Um, that is a new 
deer head to us. It's not new. It's a 2018 model, but it's new to us. Everything seemed to have worked. The Gehringhof here is literally brand new. It was the first 35 acres I put on it. The two noticeable things I noticed right away, which actually are very good things, was it handles curves a lot better as far as the snouts are like a foot shorter. We measured them. They're like a foot shorter than the deer so they don't jab into the row as you're going around the curve. That I noticed right away. The second thing I noticed is 30 inch rows when you punch those snoots through the if your rows end and you've got to kind of cut crossways of the rows. These gathering chains grab the stalks a lot better and feed them in rather than just kind of snapping them off, pushing them down. Uh, those were the two things I've noticed so far. Uh, granted, we were out for only like an hour and a half, two hours last night. Uh, so I don't really, and it was dark, so I don't really have a solid opinion. But those two features I liked a lot. So we're going to get out. i got to put some def on. And we're just going half a mile down the road. Another little field. We're just doing little fields till our second green card operator gets here. And it's Sunday and the truck drivers want a day off, so we're just gonna, uh, Dan and Randy are gonna truck for us nice close to home and cut up fields, so nothing too efficient. It's happening! We're harvesting corn! This is always the funnest uh, thing to harvest. It's just, it's laid back, it's, well, it's fast paced as far as like lots of grain gets pushed off a farm, but it's, as an operator, it's easy. There's no head touching the ground, sliding on the ground, watching for obstacles as far as that. It's rows, the head's up off the ground for the most part. It's generally pretty easy. Um, yeah, but we're gobbling her down. Oh, curb, manual steer. All right, we did complete that first field. It was just a 30 acre field got to this new field we're going to check behind the combines different variety might thrash different um, I don't see too many bad things you see anything nice job. they're smaller I did tighten down yeah, some I, I went down to 27 okay these are pretty rubbery cobs so you might have to run more speed, but we'll see. All right, what we're seeing is cobs are extremely rubber, rubbery, like hard to break. So I think we're gonna maybe speed the rotor up a bit. I don't see any stupid excessive loss, but it's definitely gonna be a little different than the other field. If we get any marginal yielding areas, we'll definitely have losses. <laughs> I actually was just on the phone with Cole the Corn Star. He's demoing a 790, I guess, and was asking for some setting advice. So hopefully he gets her figured out. I gave him the best of knowledge of settings of Minnesota grain. Maybe it's different down there. All right, right there's my grain loss monitor. I'm going 5.3 right now, currently. Uh, it's way lower than even the last field was, so that's good. It was running a little bit higher before I tightened, tightened the rotor down and sped it up. So we're definitely doing a better job uh, now with these new settings. So I feel like we got her dialed in perfect. Well, me and Brody are getting the hang of it. Another 30 acre field done. It's hard to videotape when it's mostly headlands and cut up three cornered stuff. But it is going smoothly, which is positive. Brody, he is familiar with combining with two corn combines in a field. He was one of uh, two operators, I believe, at his previous farm. So he definitely knows what he's doing. So it's going flawless. I should stop saying that because I might, uh, stuff might go bad then, huh? Oh! That beeping is sure annoying. She's uh, almost was a catastrophe. Near catastrophe avoided. See any more? Oh, there's Brody! He's caught me! 
Just a small 130,000 pound load. That's 89% full. Keep going. <laughs> That's all I got for you. So, Eric's doing pretty good uh, today for having one cart. Brian's on his way out, should be here in the morning. We're going to get a good jump on the morning tomorrow, hopefully be leaving the yard at 7.30 with two carts. And then we're heading up north, actually, to some of our burnt up, what I'd consider burnt up uh, corn. It was lack of moisture, massive lack of moisture. Um, so it ain't going to be very good, and we want to get them fields combined because what happens when corn runs out of moisture is the stock gets really brittle so you want to get them fields done first so that later in the season if you get a wind or something it don't all tip over and go flat so we're going to target um, more of the dried up fields plus the moisture is going to be drier or it should be drier that'll throw a wrench in it for dad trying to set his dryers bring them in some 17 percent right now it's 19 to 20 which we're very satisfied for how late a planting uh, we had this year very satisfied with uh, moisture plants are obviously dead from uh, the frost they were pretty green until the frost came so that frost was a lifesaver definitely was a lifesaver but you're getting a lot of leaves ingested in the combine because they're so brittle they're just falling off so you get more trash in the combine we're not having any losses so that's good and here it is the dreaded row of shame now the people on the internet all the time posting oh look at row of shame and they leave one row stand i disagree with that uh pick a half ahead take seven one pass six the next time drive faster keep the combine full picking one row you're gonna get a lot of losses because you're not filling the combine so here I am seven miles an hour combining a half ahead because I didn't trust auto path and I should have well why'd you turn off Ooh, row sense turned off for some reason Brody's like Chet you can clean up the strip you're the one that struck out fair enough why do you keep turning off? Stop doing that. Well, we got that field done. We're back at home. We took off some rows along the driveway so the truck drivers can see. But we got a hopefully a big day tomorrow. So we are going to fold up. We're going to get here early in the morning and we're going to travel up a uh, long road trip. So I'm folding her up for the first time. We're going to see how much corn it dumps out. I'm not sure if it does or not. How well it cleans out. I don't see any cobs on the ground. But this is pretty cool. And there it is. She's folded up. I see I have an oil leak though. I wonder if a fitting came loose. I know that that one coupler was ruined. The O-ring was wrecked and we put an O-ring in that ain't the right size. So that's probably why that's leaking. I need to get a new coupler for that. That's pretty neat. Be honest with you I like this it's hard to see I'm sure for you guys but with the track combine Brody's big duels will stick way past this on his uh, deer folding head but for me I'm if it weren't for the hazard lights here I'm as wide as the the combine track with the head folded up that's cool all right we're gonna fuel up to so we don't have to get here really early in the morning. Oh, hey guys. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.